Hello and welcome. Welcome everyone. Moving on, maximizing our website potential. Can I have a good webinar today? Looking forward to this, getting through as much information as we possibly can. Now, it may show on the screen there that your presenter today is Yvette Adams. Yvette's here helping me out with technical, but as you can hear by the sound of my voice, I am definitely not Yvette Adams. We'll come to that in just one moment. You can see here that we have our Twitter handle and the hashtag at Business Queensland Gov and hashtag Small Business Week. We would love it if you can just shout out if you're on Twitter and let people know what we're doing. And you can catch up on what others are saying along the line as well. Again, welcome. Thank you so much. Let's have a quick look at what we'll cover today and then we'll begin with an introduction. It's important to understand the purpose of a website. Now, this is one of the primary things that we will be talking about today to help you understand the purpose of your website and how you can improve on that as well. We're also going to look at the different website platform options available. Now, these are good things to know whether you have a website at this point of time or whether you're looking at developing or even redeveloping your website. The different options that you can look at to understand how they could affect your business. Key principles for good website design, this is a good thing to know and if you've been online for some time, oh thank goodness you would know that these have changed over time. I've got a great example coming up of I guess what websites used to look like and thank goodness they don't look like that anymore. So hopefully yours won't be like the sample that I've got for you but it will help you learn what not to be doing. We're also going to look at the key principles for website engagement. Hey, a website's good, but there's not much point in just having a brochure sitting there online. You may as well literally get a brochure and go and paste it onto your customers' uh, laptops or something like that. We need people to engage and interact with us. We're going to look at blogs. We're going to look at videos, different ways of using images and how these can affect things with your website. Also, responsive web design for different types of devices and, of course, in this mobile-enabled age, how... Uh, our website can affect things there. And then, this is important, getting people to the website, of course. And there will be an opportunity to ask questions at the end, but also we can have interactivity through the, chat, uh, the uh, text chat, and uh, I will show that to you very shortly as well. This is what it's going to look like. Hopefully you can see this somewhere. So what I'm looking for now, if you can see there in red, there's the little hand. I've got it circled here in red. Just click the hand if you can see this and put your hand up because I will be asking for some interactivity at points throughout this and looking for some feedback for you. Great. So that seems to be working. And there's also a chance there to enter a question. We have Yvette Adams here, who is an absolute guru on these things, standing by to answer your questions. Sounds like a bit of an ad, doesn't it? Standing by now. But she will be there to help you while I'm going through these different things, and then a Q&A session towards the end. Very, very important. So, let me just explain who I am and why I'm here. My name is Paul. Thank you for joining me. I do SEO training for the Creative Collective based here in Queensland. Well, they say, and I guess others do as well, an expert in search engine marketing and traffic strategies, online business conversions, basically helping people get better results online. I launched my first online business program in March 2001. Since that time, I've had the good fortune to literally help thousands, thousands and thousands of people who have attended my seminars, who have attended my webinars, and purchased products throughout the years. I'm here, I guess, for one simple reason, because I am doing and am able to help you do more of what you'd like to do online. Bit of a mouthful, but that's the thing. My goal is to help you achieve your goals online, and I really love doing it as well. So if you have a pen and paper, grab it and get ready to take some notes, and let's go through this along the way. First things first, let's look at understanding the purpose of a website and this is incredibly important to understand what are your goals for your website there are a number of different functions obviously that it could be used for maybe it's just to establish credibility or expertise and that's absolutely fantastic it helps to build your reputation online I mean wouldn't it be great if one of your customers was searching for you and they looked at you and they looked at your competition but because of the professionalism and the ease of use and its ability to answer questions your website 
stood up so much, heads and tails over them. Now, aside the, the fact that your customer may have similar products and similar pricing, this one thing alone can make a difference, giving you a trusted reputation. And as far as cost effectiveness in your advertising and marketing, it really doesn't get any better. And sure, sometimes perhaps the initial cost of getting a good uh, website online which you know generates and converts the leads that you get into sales, perhaps there is that and maybe some ongoing smaller costs. Honestly, if you haven't done recently some offline advertising, check and compare the advertising dollar for the ROI, that return on investment. It's incredible. And I love this next one, global exposure. I have customers in over a hundred countries around the world through my own online business and also then through as well I'm doing a webinar right now you could be here part of the uh, the small business week here in Queensland you could be in in oh any country anywhere and that's the wonderful thing using your website as a communication channel to engage with your customers anywhere in the world locally statewide nationally or internationally, whatever you want to do. Your website, as it says here, should aim to, number one, inform, two, engage. And then, of course, most importantly, convert your audience to some type of action. Here's a question for you. And I need to know, do you already have a website for your business? Can you give me an indication by clicking on the, the hands, the thumbs up? Give me a show of hands. How many people here already have a website for the business? Okay, great. Got some there. Let me know again. Are you happy with how it looks? Because this is important. Not only do you need to be happy, but more importantly, your customers need to be happy. Again, give me a show of hands. Yeah, okay. Interesting. Not as many as who have. Well, this is great because now we've got some opportunity for growth. I want to just give you one little bit of information here which is a key foundation strategy for success online. You might be happy with how it looks but the most important person actually isn't you. It's your customer. Is your customer happy with how things look? And they will show it to you with this. Give me another show of hands. Does your website basically work? Is it producing sales? Is it producing leads? Show of hands. Yes? Good. Fantastic. What about the rest of you? Well, you're in the right place because I want to be able to give you more info that will help you do just that. Here's a good thing about a website. It's good to have a website, yes. It's better to have a website that looks good and is appealing and attractive. But it's fantastic to have a website that converts visitors into leads or sales or customers. It's money in the bank. That's what makes the difference right at the end. So let's have a quick look here and go through some of these points. Most of us don't do our own web development. It's not, it's not actually our job. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. But in most cases, it's not our job and nor usually the best use of our time to be building our own websites. Would you agree with me on that? So here's some good notes that you can use to help you get the most out of your current web development agency or company or person, whomever that is. You need to understand very, very first off the bat, why do you want a website? Hmm, good question. Hey, I want a website because everyone has a website or because, you know, my accountant said I have to have a website or, you know, my competition, they have a website. Okay. They could be reasonable answers, but why do you need a website if you need one? Does every business need a website? That's a good question. Personally, I think yes, but the goals for that website would be different. So what is it that you need your website to do? There are a whole range of different goals that your website could have. Perhaps it's just a lead generation platform. All you want them to do is contact you because your website or your business structure is set up that you need to then follow them up by phone, get face to face with them perhaps and convert that lead into a client. Maybe your website goal is to actually sell a product online. 
or it could be to perhaps build your mailing list so that you've got more opportunities for repeat sales. What is it that you need your website to do? You need to know this before you pass this information on to your web developer. Also good to know who will use it. Your demographics, for example. You might want to build your website differently if your demographics are in the late teen, early 20s marketplaces versus the grey nomads. Interesting to look at web development from that point of view. Usability. How about what other tools have worked for you in the past? What marketing strategies have you used in your business that have actually worked? And these are the kinds of questions that you would sit down, I best suggest, with maybe a cuppa. And just sit down with one or two other business friends or people in your business and strategize. How could you maybe streamline your current processes? Could your website fit in with that? Do you have a budget? You should. If you don't, good idea. Don't let someone just keep taking money, keep taking money, keep taking money. Not a good business strategy. So what is your budget? And when you're talking with your web developer, you should say, well, if I was just to invest this, what's available? Or what if I was to do this and then a little more over time? What other benefits could I see for my customers and then for my business? Here's a good question. How much time do you have to invest into your website? Just between you and me, if you're running flat chat busy, you've got no time at all. But then we do also sometimes have those quieter moments where perhaps you could be doing some of the updating of things yourself. These are good things to know before you begin with an update of your website or a complete new site along the lines. Who will have access to it? Just you? Maybe your web developer? How about an army of people out there who can be writing content for you left, right and centre? These are good things to know because when your web developer is talking with you, you can be saying to him or to her, this is what I need, this is how I need it to work, this is how what I've done in the past which works, I've only got this amount to uh, invest and I'd like to update it perhaps on a weekly basis and I'll be able to do some of that myself. Can you give me a package that would work? Good questions to know the answers to, don't you think? Well, there are a range of different answers to some of these questions. So let's have a look at the main three key options for web development. Option number one, design an FTP. Sort of sounds like we're going off the planet somewhere. It's, it's a term, file transfer protocol. Now this is really starting to go old, old school along the way. This is the way that I was building websites when I first started with this what are we now, nearly 15 years ago now that I've been working online and we would just you know, use different programs and then we would upload them to the web. I'll talk about more of these actually in a few moments. Open source, option two, things like uh, Joomla, Drupal, WordPress, you may have heard some of these. Open source in its simplest form means the coding is open and people can get access to edit and develop themselves. And then there are the hosted applications that are out there, things like Business Catalyst, for example, where it's just a complete package and well, it's probably not such a good idea for you to get in there and start messing with the code. No, it's not open source. It's a package there ready to go. It can sometimes cost a little more, but of course it means that you've got someone there who's taking care of security and updates and you get to benefit from the different options with development. Let's have a quick look at these in more detail, just a little, so that you can understand which one would be the best option for you. Number one, design and then you FTP. Transfer it from your computer up to the World Wide Web. Now this is fun stuff. Let me just quickly share a story. The first time that I did this, and if you're looking at me right now going, I have no idea what you're talking about, well that was me 15 years ago. I created a website on my computer and this thing looked really snazzy. Hey, this is 15 years ago. It wasn't, trust me. But it looked at and I was really impressed and I did it with just a basic HTML program. You can get things like front page and then there's Dreamweaver and there's a whole range of different things. That was step one. I created the website on my computer. Step two, I then had to get that from my computer to the internet, the www. 
It took me six months the very first time to figure out how to do that because back in 1998 there was no training showing you how to do it. So I finally got this sucker up on the web and oh, I was chuffed. It looked fantastic. There was the problem though. Every time that I wanted to make changes, I had to go and look at my website. Then I had to come back to my computer and make those changes and then FTP them back to the web and then go and look at them, refresh the page and make the changes back on the computer and you can see where I'm going with this. Now, you can still build great looking websites using these types of systems, but it can be a little labor intensive. And nowadays with software technology, if you're not techie, in a simple nutshell, it's not going to happen. So then we would look at other types of options. Open source software. You can see there's a circle around one of these, but we have on left to right Drupal, Joomla, the W. WordPress that stands for and there are others as well these are not just only they are some of the most popular that are out there now here's the good thing about open source software and I'll talk to you in a moment and show you some stats on WordPress for example which just happens to be the platform that I use for my own website at my domain name I have WordPress installed and then I overlay a theme on top of that and within that theme, and even within WordPress, if I had the coding ability, because it's open source, I can make whatever changes I want. Of course, I'm careful because I'm actually not a techie, and it takes me six months to figure some of this stuff out, so I do get some help. Good idea if you run your own business. If it's not your job, perhaps you should get some help. But I have a lot of options there. There is one challenge that I do face though, and I'm going to give you a physical example of how this has caused me pain in the last month. There are a number of security updates with WordPress and that's great. We love security updates because the more popular your website gets, the more likely someone will try and hack it. I get around on average 100 to probably 150 hack attempts every single week into the back end of my WordPress. None of them have got through yet because I have the right things in place to stop that from happening, but I have to keep updating and make sure that I'm doing that. A few weeks back, I guess maybe a month, maybe a little bit more now, I, was, uh, I took on a website for someone. I was helping them out, and they said, look, I need you just to update these things for me because they were scared, wasn't quite sure, and so no problem. I looked at their back-end WordPress, and it hadn't been updated for like four years. And I was like, yeah, okay, this really needs to be updated. So I did hit the update and all of a sudden their website boom, just literally disappeared. I was not impressed. Now it was my fault. I hadn't backed that puppy up beforehand and I have no idea why. I think it might be the second time in my life I haven't created excessive backups of everything. But it happened and the update caused some problems. Because what had happened, being open source, is the, the previous person who had built their website had gone and changed a whole bunch of things that the update overrode. Ah, that was the problem. I ended up having to build them a website for free. Had no choice. It was my fault. That is, and it's a once-off. I've never done that before, and, you know, touch wood, I'm never going to do it again. But open source when you get in there and start playing around you do leave yourself sometimes open to potential problems then you have another option which is your online hosted applications now there are an, again a number of these different uh, things that we use we, we talked about before uh, and we look at them here's the best option of how these things actually work comes down to this and like business catalyst is a good example it's hosted somewhere. It's a package that you, you put the whole thing together. You can see here that you have access, perhaps you and your team, to building the content, and there's the developer in there, and you know it comes out and creates a website for you. The good thing about this is you get to cross out some of these steps along the way, and you get to just work with the template. And if there's a problem, it's probably not your problem. At times, these things will cost you a little bit more money. But here's another live example. When just last week I logged into the back end of a client's website and I noticed that there was some kind of technical error showing up, you know, the little flashing warning lights. We've got a problem, we've got a problem. Whatever that problem was. And I was able to say to my client, no problem. 
just talk to the people who put this system together for you and bang it's done it's fixed because it's all there as a package and the website is there and easy easy for that business owner to just go and make changes to their content they're only changing the content they're not changing the structure of how the website looks and the coding behind it that's greater security and the updates and so on are managed by the team who put this software together for them so it can run can cost a little bit more money but there are greater options there available for security and for problem solving and all of these things however not to throw the baby out with the bathwater but just to now illustrate to you what the world is doing at this point of time WordPress is without doubt the most popular website platform in the world with almost 60% market share and there's others you know Joomla and Drupal and Blogger and .NET Nuke I haven't even heard of some of these Homestead didn't even know they were still around but we go down the list and there's a whole bunch of options but look at that talk about market share there's got to be a good reason folks give me just a quick show of hands one just to make sure you're still awake hello time to wake up but give me a show of hands who has a WordPress based website yes it is popular isn't it the show of hands shows that here's why I chose it for mine and why perhaps reasons you may like to consider it for yours if you're not already doing this number one I don't play around with the code myself and I rarely want someone else to play around with the code so that I don't have problems with updates I then have the WordPress and then I have a design theme which is overlaid on top of that and it looks good it's good for me it's also good for my who who's the most important person the customer it's good for them as well very very important it's easy for me as a business owner to be able to add content to and manage some of the marketing aspects with various plugins literally plug it in and it works I have learned over time that if there is a problem it's usually with one of those what you'd call a third-party plugin you just deactivate it and problems fixed it's easy to use it's easy to manage and that's why it is the most popular it's also incredibly affordable but it's not the best solution for everybody I'm not selling you one or the other here I'm simply showing you some of the differences so you can go hmm when I talk to my web developer these are some of the options and this is what you can do so you can maximize the potential of your website not just follow the crowd we don't like sheep we like people who just go yeah I'm informed and I understand so let's have a quick look here you can see this slide is just the the inside this is like what it looks like on the inside of a business catalyst website it's a CMS what's called content management system very very simple it, it's it's what's called a WYSIWYG editor and no I'm not swearing at you if you haven't heard that term before W I S W I G WYSIWYG stands for what you see is what you get and so you just simply get in there and you get to make changes along the way and you can see down there the bottom all the different options for fonts and styling and different things it kind of looks like Microsoft Word doesn't it well see WordPress is very similar not always as many options depending on how things are set up and this enables you if you want to create a new web page as was being done here when this slide was taken easy to do because your web developer could just set everything up for you and then bang you go in here and do this easy to do and that's what I want to emphasize for you with these content management systems like business catalyst or WordPress and so on easy to do that's the most important thing also easy to get somebody else to do as well don't forget that if it's your job and it is easy to do I suggest you do it if it's not your job and it's not easy for you to do I suggest you get somebody else that is of course if you want to get the most out of your website or you could spend a few months learning how make sense of course so here's the question which option is best for you mm, be good to sit down and just go yep I know that one here's the thing there isn't a one-size-fits-all solution 
right? There are a number of different questions they need to be asked to determine which solution is right for your business. So when you're talking with your web developer, guy or girl, whomever is doing that for you, you need to have this understanding, which is why I've gone through them, so you can take these things into consideration that we have just here. What do you need? What features, what kind of functionality do you require? If you have an idea for some content for your website, would you like to be able to just go and add that yourself? Or perhaps you have dates or times or prices that need changing. Do you need to pay someone else for that? Or is there someone in the office who can do it for you, perhaps yourself? Do you want to go the DIY? Hey, it's the thing of the month. We look at all the television shows on, on television, DIY cooking, DIY house, DIY everything. But if you do that, how much training will you need? This is why I suggest that you sit down perhaps with a couple at one point with a couple of business friends and talk over the options and jot some notes down. Now there is this thing called budget. It's good to have a budget and sometimes that can be the determining factor. It's time versus money. If you have the time and not the money then I guess the only option is learn to do it yourself depending on how much time. And then of course there's the balance. Maybe some time to do some things yourself and the money to have others doing it or of course if you just have the money because we all get emails from those princes from overseas in Africa who just like want to leave millions of dollars to us, don't we? Yeah, we've got the money. We just, well, got to give away our life to get it. Not true. When it comes to this, it's a matter of a simple equation. Can you do it or should you have someone else? And then where do you want to host it? Most of your hosted, you know, your content management systems, they come with hosting. That problem's taken care of. Here's the thing. I love this down the bottom. A good web developer or agency will be able to advise you on the most efficient option to meet your needs, functionality requirements, and what? Budget. A good web developer. Now, there are lots of web developers. Yes, we can build you a website. It's going to cost you $300, and this is how we're going to do it. They're not listening to your needs. They're certainly not interested in your customers' needs. As far as anything, they're just looking for, I want $300 in the bank now so I can go and give it to my Iranian prince or something like that. We all get emails like that probably sometimes too, don't we? I had to laugh about two weeks ago. I was watching a video from a fellow called Matt Cutts. Now, Matt Cutts is Google's go-to guy. Google has their own channel, and he, was, he handles their sort of online spam team. And he was telling us, in this video how even he receives emails this just cracked me up he receives the emails from the search engine optimizing marketing companies how they are going to help Google get a better place in Google so don't feel so bad oh I must be getting really bad rankings because I keep getting these emails no everyone gets these emails even Google a good web developer, however, will listen to your needs and help you understand what is best for your customers. Now, I mentioned up front, bright, sparky, and early, that I'm going to show you an example of a horrible-looking website. Oh, yeah. Are you ready? Would you? Show of hands. Who wants to have a look at a horrible-looking website? We have a few. It's going to look something along the lines of well, it'll certainly prove that design isn't everything. Who remembers these? Who's been online long enough to remember the flashing bells and the whistles and all the different things? Yvette, yay, this is a corker. I love it. I remember having a website that I thought was just everything and everything it literally was. It wasn't necessarily the best thing. Now, obviously, this is overkill. But a good design doesn't mean that the website works or even that your website developer understands marketing. Now, I've been involved in this industry now for 15 years, running my own business online for the last 10 years, helping other businesses get better results online. Here's one thing that I have learned, and it's a generalization, but I think you'll understand. Most web designers don't know about web marketing. 
this is just my own personal opinion from what I've seen over the, the last 10 years. And I'm saying most because there certainly are some who do. You need to find a balance between design and functionality and marketing. The ability to convert the customer from a browser into a buyer. And of course design is what? In the eye of the beholder. Just because you think it looks good actually doesn't mean it does. When you're talking to your web developer, you really should listen to their opinion. Now, yes, you do have, I guess, the final say, but sometimes some of the things that you may want to say may not be such a good idea. I did have a client a little while back who wanted these in interesting fonts, shall I say, appearing on their website. And I just said, it's not going to work. Trust me, it'll be too difficult for people to read. But very, very fixed on their ideas. So I said, no problem. Let's get some feedback. We put the website up with this very difficult font, very difficult to read. Feedback came within a week. So hard to read what's on your site. Now, it looked great, but I knew. And you will find that most good web designers will know and will understand. And a good web designer won't always just shake their, sorry, nod their head and go, you know, Yes, sir, no, sir, three bags, full, sir. We will let you know what is best for you and best for your customers. We don't have to agree. We will do our best, but we will give you the right advice along the way. So let's have a look at what the key principles for good design are. And you can go back this afternoon and you can look at your website and go, yeah, I'm winning. I've got some points in this particular area. Navigation, it's got to be easy. It's got to be simple for people to be able to find their way through. Of course it does. So your navigation, your menu bar across the top, usually, easy for people to look at, easy for people to understand, easy for people to go, yep, this is where I'm going to find what I'm looking for along the way. Now, accessibility, that's an interesting one. You've got to make sure your site is accessible to all, including people with disabilities. Now, this is obviously going to depend more on your marketplace, but it's, it works along the same principle as different browsers. Good to make sure that your website is visible and viewable on all browsers. Working on a site for a client at the moment, they came to me a few weeks back and said, look, lady over here has done a great job and then this fellow who works with them has also done a great job, but I can't look at my website properly in, I don't want to even name the browser, but XYZ. And I checked it out and I went, well, you're right. The menus, uh, they're dynamically, they're just not working. Interesting. Now, what had happened, that was actually a WordPress-based website with a bit of open source and someone had gone in there and played with the code and messed things up. Someone who said they knew what they were doing but actually didn't. So you as a business owner absolutely have to go and check up. Is it working on these different browser platforms? Is it accessible to different people in different marketplaces? Is it consistent? The font choices, the sizes, the coloring, the button. You don't want to be arriving on every different page and make it look like you're on a different website. Not a good idea. How about the colors? This is an interesting point. Use a maximum of three colors in the palette. Yeah. Let's not have it looking something like that. And, you know, I just want to look at that and go, ah, really hard to understand. It's got to be simple. The hyperlinks the buttons, the phone numbers, everything easy to read. And having a nice white background, white space, not a bad thing, actually a good thing. Makes it what? Easy to read. Same with the fonts that you choose. If you want it to look good on just about everybody's computer, if not all, these are some of the rules that you need to follow along the way. Ever heard this before? The eight second rule? Hey, if you've ever been involved in dating, you know it's true. It's also the true for websites. The average time someone will take to evaluate a website and then decide whether it's going to be good for them. Now, you can use things like Google Analytics to help you understand whether people are deciding if it's good for them. 
but it's important that you need to understand your target audience and what they're looking for. And by providing obviously relevant and interesting information for them. Looking at this website just here, you can see if you're looking for some off road safaris, bang, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, ah, I can easily find where I'm going here with to a Cape York. Look at that, it's just, it's right there. It's easy to find, easy to understand. Sends the user directly where they're going. It's also important to understand that how things actually work when people are looking to read your website. How do they read it? They don't. They scan through. They're in a hurry. We're always in a hurry. Even if we're not in a hurry, we're in a hurry. So if you look at the structure of your website and think about you know, the upside down period, the most important things need to be right up there first. So if requesting a quote is important, it shouldn't be hard to find the place to request a quote. And then keep it short. Visitors scan their websites. It needs to be kept short. All your copy straight to the point. If you want to have long copy somewhere else, then have a link to it. You can read the full story here. Keep it clever but not offensive. Keep it simple and effective. If you're not a writer, no problem. Get some help. Good, clean copy can help increase your conversions and therefore your sales. Very important. Do some good keyword research which will bring the right kind of customers to your website. I ask people in my SEO workshops, I say, what does SEO, search engine optimization, mean to you? And they say, oh, it means getting found first in Google or getting a top three position or getting up the top. And I say, no. What it actually means is getting the right kind of visitors to your website and then more of them so you can convert more customers from the search engines. It's not just about getting traffic, it's about getting the right kind of traffic so you can convert them. And look at the tone, look at the way which you talk with these people. Here's a good example, and I like to use this as an example for the Creative Collective. If you're looking for social media training, would you agree with me that, oh yeah, this is going to be easy to find? Yes, it's a good page for this as a landing page. If you're looking for training and events, can you see, just give me a quick show of hands, can you see where maybe there's additional a link to additional training or events that the Creative Collective runs? Yes, of course, it's easy to see, isn't it? Maybe you just like to contact them. Easy to see, easy to find? Absolutely. And this is one of the things that you need to understand with your website. This page was created right, using highly customized, highly relevant words and images and the way it's been structured, it all says, bang, this is what we do. And now, now, this is the beautiful thing. We get great positions on Google and get regular, here's the key, qualified leads and then sales from that particular page. So let's have a look now at what you can do. Great to hear about what we're doing, but let's show you what you can do. How about business blogs? Would you just give me a, a click, a raise of hands? Do you have a business blog? Yes, great, we've got some, good. Many of us have heard of blogging. What about, you know, how well is it working for you? Or you're having challenges with it? Put some things into the text chat just there to, to let us know what's happening. A blog is a powerful, powerful tool. It gives you an option to easily and if necessary, I should believe it should be frequently update posts on any topic of interest for your website. People love content. People love to read and learn stuff. That's pretty much what the web is for. If you're not going there for pleasure, you're going there to find out information. So you can actually create a relationship with your targeted audience and you can show your expertise by publishing articles and, and opinion pieces and updates or portfolio work. Fantastic Google juice. Yeah, it's kind of an industry in term, but it means, yes, we are feeding Google what Google wants. And I will tell you now that when it comes to blogging and regular frequent updates, Google loves this stuff. And we know there are other search engines out there, not suggesting they're not. Just happens to be the phrase Google juice. Who remembers watching in the movies back when, let's see, we go back almost eight or nine years? whenever the first time was for you and you heard it in the movies, someone said, I'm going to go find me out 
this information, I'm going to Google it. Remember that? Well, that's part of the good branding. And you get the chance to brand things with your blog as well and help your customers learn more about what you're doing. So you've got two choices to do this. You can do it on site, which means get a blog added to your content management system. Easy with WordPress, easy with, uh, actually I think it's pretty well easy with all of them these days, but you've got to be aware of it and ask for it. Or you could set up a, a separate, you know, a free blog on a wordpress.com or blogger.com. Now there are some advantages to this, less stuff for you to worry about, but it also does create another website literally that you've got to manage. Plus if you're getting traffic to that, you've still got to then send it back to your website at some point. So I recommend that you host your blog on your own website, yourdomain.com.au slash blog. For example, instead of having you know your business name dot wordpress dot com, you want to be able to host this and run this yourself. Does that make sense? The benefits overall will pay off in your favour for this. Now there are a couple of other ways to maximise your website to get better results from your website, and that is the use of images and video, not just video. I like this. Images and video. Benefits are this. Images and videos provide rich media content. Now, if you're on Facebook or something like that and you're scrolling through your wall, what happens to stick out? Images. Yes. Images are more likely, not more likely, they are just guaranteed to be shared more often than a normal text or something like that. And then videos and then the text. You know, it's just pretty much the same for your website. So if you're embedding videos from places like YouTube, ah, this is interesting, can also help with search engine rankings. Good idea, I think, depending of course on your target market and your customers, they are the final decision makers, but to have a video on the front page. You can look at giving more information delivered differently to different people and of course reinforce the key messages. So if you're selling a product, an image, absolute must, but not too many, could lose focus. Be careful that you do have the rights to use those images and videos, and you can do technical things like add in alt tags and so on to assist with your uh, videos along the way. Here's how easy it is to actually do. Embedding a YouTube video, you go to YouTube and you would click share. Now this image was taken and I take no liability for the fact that YouTube may change their menu, but they haven't done it for a while. Hey, YouTube is owned by Google, and we just know that companies like to change stuff. So you click share, you grab that code when you've clicked the embed code, and you copy and paste it into your website. Pretty simple. Very simple, in fact. Give me a show of hands. Who has video on their website? Yep. Okay, great. Now, what about those of you who don't? Who'd be likely to give it a go? Look at this. Look how easy this is. Do you think that might be possible, something you could have a go at, have a crack at it sometime in the future? All right, good. That's what I like to see is people, yep, yeah, I'm ready to give, give it a go and, and maybe change things up a bit. Fantastic. Who's heard of this? Give me a show of hands, responsive websites. Do you have a responsive website? If you don't know what it is yet, then you probably don't know, but it is simply this. I like to explain it this way. A responsive website is a website that will respond differently to the browser, the screen that it is being viewed on. So a note tab, a, a tablet, a notepad, or a phone, or a desktop device. Screen size is completely different, yes, but the website will change accordingly. Look at the stats here of how people are currently accessing the internet. Interesting. The implications for today's business is like, wow, I could read off and parrot off numbers, but let me say it like this when it comes to mobile browsing, especially here in Australia. Wow, it's getting on the uptake. People are doing it. Crazy people like me will sit down and watch the morning program while having a, on the television with a tablet on our laps, having our morning coffee, checking our updates on 
uh, our various blogs and feeds and internet stuff. Now, all right, maybe I'm a little above and beyond because I work in the industry, but a lot of people do it. They find stuff online. They're looking, you know, using a BlackBerry or an iPhone or their Android device or, or whatever. The list just goes on. So here's the question for you. How do you know whether you should have a responsive website? We, want, we don't just look for mobile designed websites anymore. Who wants to build a second website? We can have one that does all three things together. How do you know? Here's my best suggestion. Look at your analytics and your web stats. I like to say to people, as soon as you're getting between 12 and 15% of your visitors coming in on mobile, you need to have a responsive website because it will be optimized for each individual person. Here's a good sample. If you can go and have a look at this one, Ministry of Villas. Oh, yeah, this is beautiful stuff done by the Creative Collective team. And by incorporating responsive web design, everyone gets the best possible viewing option. Why would you want to put your customers out in the open? Yeah, it doesn't quite make sense, does it? So you can look at this one and go and check it out. If you're online watching this, uh, perhaps on your desktop computer or on a laptop and you've got your phone nearby, pull it up, ministryofvillas.com. Great example. And then I mentioned this earlier, cross-browser testing. The browser is the thing that you actually look at, you always use on your computer to then for a user to view the internet. Firefox or Chrome. Or Netscape, it's net, no, it's not Netscape, still around. Um, you've got Internet Explorer in there as well, and there are a whole bunch of different things. Safari, that's the uh, the logo up the top there. So depending on what kind of computer you own and what it comes with, sometimes websites appear differently. Did you realise that? We all use the same one. No, we don't. Not anymore. So as a general rule, your web developer should be able to make sure your website is visible and isn't going to break on these different platforms. That's important. How about this one? Share buttons. These are great for, for marketing and helping things go viral. Show, quick show of hands, who has share buttons on their website already? Alright, good. Leave your hand up if you've got more than six. Hmm, interesting. Now, of course, this depends on your customers as to what they're doing and what's getting shared, but you need to understand that not everyone needs everything. A few options. Depending on how your website's set up, there are different ways. Addthis.com, sharethis.com, webya.com. Not quite sure how to pronounce that one. I haven't used it myself. But there are a whole lot of different options. Uh, I Having a WordPress based website, I use something called Sexy Bookmarks. Oh, don't you love that name? Sexy Bookmarks. I want to do a Sean Connery voice, but I can't. Or just look, if, he, if I got him to do that, that would be great. But it allows me to have easy share buttons on my website and I can choose which ones I want. Just about half a dozen, no more, just the big ones for my industry. That's pretty much all you need. And as you go through things, along the line you can start or your users will start sharing your content because it's good cool content it's sexy content if you know what I mean your customers love it good for Google good for your customers that's what people like to see of course your website is also useful for offline inquiry and business did you realize that of course how many people hear of something from a friend or maybe on a radio advertisement or something they've seen in print media or even just a business card, a signage of, of someone driving past in their truck. Oh yeah, I'm looking for that. I'm going to go and check it out now online. And this is where our websites really come in handy to boost our profile and help close that customer so they do contact you. And these days as well, particularly with mobile devices, they can the customer can do it straight away. In my case, with my phone, I can just press a button and I can speak into my phone and it will find what I'm looking for, which is why it's good to make sure our websites are search engine optimized for natural text as well. 
there's a whole bunch of different ways and we're starting to wrap this up now a whole bunch of different ways that we can get people to our website I don't have the time I wish I did to go through each and every one of these but do you have a signature file on your webs uh, on your emails do you have have you had someone do some search engine optimization for you both on your pages and off you need both do you use social media Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn or whatever is best for your industry how about pay-per-click advertising click two dollars something comes out of your account click but you get good qualified customers online advertising many different uh, medium do you have a newsletter or online press releases good idea blogging beautiful so many things you can be doing and so when you set things up properly you get traffic from a whole bunch of different ways what do you do with that traffic though this is so important I wish I had more time just to go over this slide this is I guess a whole webinar on its own and we've had some great webinars through the weekend through the month always more coming it's invaluable to be able to check the performance of your website Google Analytics is the one that I recommend but there are many I love Google because it's free it's probably the most popular now it can give you some great information and you can go and look at past reports like this one here and you can compare them to current reports and you can see where your traffic is coming from and you can look at a whole bunch of different things here's a good slide just showing some of those you can have your you know quick access dashboard reports look at instant current statistics where your new visitors are coming from how about are they unique is it their first time is it their second time how long they spend on the site whether they land and bounce straight away look at one page and go away again you can look at how much revenue you're generating through setting up goals and how many people begin the goal process and where they leave along the way you can get real-time reporting if you're running an ad campaign you can jump on your website uh, through analytics and look hey I've got you know 195 people on my site right now and this is what they're doing you can look at the traffic sources you can look at how the content is being used whether it's effective if you've got videos how long people are watching them wouldn't that be good to know how long people spend looking at your content because if you created a four minute five minute video and they spend 35 seconds chances are it's not a good video or they're the wrong kind of visitor yes it could be one or the other it may be the wrong content or it may be the wrong visitor yeah it could be one or the other if you're generating the wrong kind of traffic through search engines or pay-per-click they'll never convert no matter how good your content is analytics will help you decide that so folks let's just take a moment to summarize and then we'll move on to some questions it's vitally important that you understand the purpose of your website and understand your target market you need to have these things in mind because it should guide the design and the functionality of your site so whether you are doing it or if it's not your job have someone else to do it you need to have these things in mind and remember to consider the elements of the navigation easy to use that's what I like to say here's a good rule easier to use than not to use does that make sense don't make it confusing if you've got big drop-down menus off your uh, menu bar and well I can tell you now that's not easy to use if your site isn't responsive and someone's looking at it on a mobile device because chances are they're going to press that button that drop down is going to come up and boom, it's going to go below the screen on the phone or the tablet or it's just going to take them somewhere they didn't want to go easy to use so make sure number four that your website is readable across different devices very very important and your content is relevant and that you promote your website using both online and offline methods not just one thing hey if I do this I'm gonna be on a winner no you need to do all of these things which is why sometimes it's too much for one person and that's when we ask for help very good to take some time to review and understand what is working and what is not using something like Google Analytics oh very very important I like to sit down I guess twice a month I could do it more but that's all I have time for and look at my analytics and go hmm 
interesting. I need to make some change or I can improve on that better along the way. So let's now just open up for some very quick questions and you've got a workbook that comes with this and I mean there's a whole lot more in there. A lot of questions along the way. I wonder, do we have some questions here? Let's have a quick look. Okay. Here's one that's come through. Are there any complications for using other people's YouTube videos on your website? Simple answer. Oh yeah, definitely not a good idea. Unless of course you've asked their permission. Now I had someone I was talking to just recently who has a, a whole bunch of different products in their e-commerce setup and uh, the company who sells the products has their own web, uh, their own videos. So no need for this client to create their own. The company who sells the product has, has the videos. Okay, got permission. Best rule of thumb, no permission, no use. That's about the best thing I can say for that one, all right? make sure you've got permission to actually use that video. You could get yourself into Stripe. All right, any other questions? Do you do analytics webinars? Yes, analytics is a very, very good thing to understand and there's a whole bunch of different levels. The way I like to do it is very simply this, keep it simple. Would you agree with me that's a good principle? Yeah, keep it simple, make it easy and you'll find that there are many options available. We gave you some great examples there, websites done by the Creative Collective, um, certainly can help you out with the analytics and understanding of things. Do we have a, another question here? Okay, just got a question here or I guess a comment regarding uh, the content of the topic and so on. All right, with this particular one, the, uh, the content which was given to us here it's about learning how to maximize your website and improve its potential. Now it is very possible that there are going to be some people and there perhaps were a few people listening to this who are doing each and every one of these things. Interesting. You could be doing those things but perhaps still not getting the results that you're looking for. My best suggestion would be this. It's because you're doing them but focusing on them individually and maybe not looking at how these things come together and how they work together, you know, individual pieces of the puzzle, making that puzzle come together. It comes down to this one simple principle. I could tell you a hundred things about how to improve your website, but what you really need to do is listen to your customers and what they want. So if you're in a position where you think you're doing everything right and you're not getting the results that you want and you're not learning something new from the training that you're doing, I'm going to suggest that you go to your customers and say what do you want and then give it to them. That's the simple be all end all. That is the business principle for success. Yeah, and there are of course a whole bunch of other more detailed training. I wish I had more time. Honestly, if I had, I'd spend the whole afternoon, but there'd only be two people listening. That's myself and Yvette. See, actually no, even Yvette wouldn't be hanging around the whole afternoon. No, it's a Saturday, sunshine. There's a lot more training available and we can get you know, deep down and into the detail of what people are looking for. The purpose of this website, uh, this webinar was to help people understand the options. If you need to study more, then we certainly can study more. Okay, a uh, couple of last questions. Which of these different uh, metrics are most important? Search engine, uh, search traffic keywords, search traffic match, search query, uh, search traffic source, Okay, I think I know where you're going with this. What do we need to look at in terms of understanding whether we're getting some good results from the search engines? Number one, you need to understand what phrases, what keyword phrases people are using to find your website. A couple of ways to do this. One is with Google Analytics. Good tells you what people actually find in your website. But if you go to Google Webmaster Tools, you can see how Google sees your website. That's also a good thing to know. So between the two of them, you want to understand how people are finding you. Now, if you're getting a lot of traffic and not a lot of conversions, it could be because you're getting the wrong kind of traffic. So you need to focus that. Once you're getting the right kind of traffic, what you then need to do is look at your analytics and look at, say, the traffic flow. Someone lands on the home page, where do they go next? Now, if they're going to page B, when you really want them to be looking at page A, then you need to rewrite the content of your home page. Once you've got that right and they're going to where you want them to, then you want to look at how long they're spending on that page or on your site. 
because you, once you know how long they're spending on the page, you know whether they're even reading what you're giving to them or viewing the video. And this will help you with your conversions along the way. You can do it by setting up goals in Google Analytics. Say the goal might be to arrive on a particular page and a secondary goal, spend a number, a, a certain amount of time on that, on that page. These are more accurate than just looking at everything. Google Analytics, in a nutshell, has been set up for both the corporate, the SME, and the micro business sector. Depending on who you are, you only need about a third of what's in there. Don't get hung up on everything. All right, we've got time for uh, one last question. Having a quick look here, what's the best keyword density on a home page in terms of keeping Google happy? All right, I'm going to tell you exactly how to keep Google happy when it comes to keyword density. And this comes from Google themselves. It's a quote from one of their videos on the Google Webmaster Help video channel on YouTube. They say, your keywords must be natural and relevant in your text. Now that's not the answer that you were looking for. You wanted a number. You wanted me to say, okay, it's 2.5% or it's 3% or it's 4.7 with a scratch on the side. No, your keywords must be natural and relevant in the text. Which means if you're going to go for, and let's talk numbers a minute, hey, let's have a keyword density of 5%, and for every five words out of 100, I'm going to put my keyword phrase in there. Well, it might look kind of stupid, because natural and relevant means natural. People who use keyword stuffing, customers come along, look at it, and go, hey, this looks silly. These people aren't very smart. So if you're looking for a number, I'm actually not going to give you that number because it changes every single time there's an update. At least we think it does. They don't tell us. But you know, if you're looking around that 2 to 3%, I guess that's what you're looking for. I'm going to suggest that you don't. And if you have plugins on your website that give you the numbers, get rid of them. Here's the important thing. Write for your customers. Last thought on Google and keywords and search engines. Who does Google need to please? Their customers. Who do you need to please? Well, naturally, you think your customers. Well, when it comes to search engine marketing, no, you don't. You need to please Google's customers. So you do this for writing for them, not for yourself. Once they're your customers, then you can do what you want with them. But in the meantime, they're Google's. So that means good keyword density in your meta title, good keyword density in your meta description that they'll see on Google relevant if you're looking to you know just don't put unrelevant stuff there that's the basic key and don't make it look silly by repeating the same thing twice in a row and then the same for your home page relevant and natural one page should present one problem which presents one solution usually the home page solution is here's where you need to go to get your answer I hope that helps with your question along the way a couple of last things just to wrap up very quickly yeah, I can see there are more questions, folks. I'm sorry. I wish we could go through more. But here's some more references and some links here with the Facebook and with Twitter and with YouTube. You can get more information along the way. Uh, I subscribe to these myself. I, I help run these webinars, and then I go and watch the others because I'm always learning, too, along the way. And lastly, thank you very much. Really, thank you so much for taking your time out today to actually do this and join. And please, stay with us. Um, you're going to get a survey before you log off. If you could just take a couple of moments to fill that out, I will certainly appreciate it. We as a team will certainly appreciate it, and it will help us develop things which will work for everybody in the future to get better results along the way. All right, that'll be coming to you in just one moment. Again. Thank you very much. I'm just looking at the, the technical thing here. Trying to, I'm, I'm ready to click, click send on the survey. I know. Hang on there. Hang on there. Welcome to the World Wide Web. All right. So that's coming in just one moment. I might just answer one more question while we're doing that. And the other question here was just regarding the analytics for the home page. Well, yes, you need analytics on your home page. You need analytics on every page. I was doing some work for a client just recently, about two weeks ago, and I was just trying to look at their bounce rate. And in their analytics, I'm going, hmm, wow, 
their home page doesn't have the highest bounce rate. I wonder why. Well, then I realized that they'd had a, a recent website upgrade and there was no analytics on their home page. So this is one of the things that you really should be checking yourself. Simple oversight by their web developer. All right. Simple mistake, easy to correct, took about eight seconds to correct. But when you get to understand these things, yes. So when it comes to analytics and your home page, most likely it will have the highest bounce rate. But that could be one of two reasons. One is because you're getting the wrong kind of traffic, or two, you're not directing it the people correctly and making it super easy for them. All right? That's the key. It has to be super easy. So like I said beforehand, if you're doing all of these things and not getting the results that you want, well, there's one of two different problems. Number one is you're not doing all of these things, you're deluding yourself. Or two is someone says they should be, they are doing all of these things and they're not doing all of these things. It's a big jigsaw puzzle. It's a matter of putting, bringing the whole thing together 